Academic integrity is a moral concept that ensures that you are honest in your academic endeavors. In short, it means that you are honest in what you do. Academic integrity involves understanding what constitutes plagiarism and cheating, as well as being aware of copyright laws and how they apply to you. Let's start by looking at plagiarism and all of the things that it encompasses. According to Merriam-Webster's online dictionary, plagiarize means to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as one's own, to use another's production without crediting the source. It also means to commit literary theft, to present as new and original an idea or product derived from an existing source. Essentially, plagiarism is stealing, stealing thoughts, ideas, and opinions, passing them off as your own. This happens every day in high school, college, and even the real world, but there are consequences. In college, punishment can go as far as being expelled from school. In the real world, people have to pay fines for plagiarizing. In high school, it could result in a zero for the assignment, a zero for the class, and it may keep you from participating in things like honor society, sports, or even graduation. One of the reasons people use for plagiarizing is that they don't know they're doing it, so let's look at some of the types of plagiarism that you might engage in, knowingly or not. Going back to Merriam-Webster's, let's take a look at the first part of the definition. To steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as one's own. To use another's production without crediting the source. This part of the definition includes things like you turn in somebody else's work word for word as your own. This includes things like homework assignments and science labs too, not just papers. You copy large amounts of information straight from one source without changing anything. You copy large amounts of information from several different sources, sometimes changing a few words and trying to make it flow better. You copy large amounts of information, but change a few words here and there. You mention the author's name in your paper or assignment, but you don't provide an accurate citation so that somebody can find the original source. You do not provide accurate citations, making it impossible to find the sources that you used. You use proper citations for your sources, but you still copy word for word and do not use quotation marks. Now let's take a look at the second part. To commit literary theft, to present as new and original an idea or product derived from an existing source. This part of the definition might include activities such as submitting a paper, presentation, or assignment to one teacher that you completed for another course. You actually take the time to paraphrase most of your assignment and try to make it flow together, but you don't actually develop any original ideas of your own. You properly cite all of your sources, you paraphrase and use quotation marks appropriately, but you do not contribute any original thought or ideas to the document. You use proper citations, quotations, and paraphrases in some parts of your paper, but fail to do so in other parts, trying to pass off paraphrasing as your own analysis. Or you write an assignment for a foreign language course, then use translation software to translate it from English to the target language. According to one study conducted with high school juniors, there was a large instance of plagiarism in all academic areas. One of the largest areas of plagiarism is when students copy each other's homework and lab work assignments. Anytime you use somebody else's work without proper citation, it's considered plagiarism. Another issue we see often at the high school level is that students will copy portions, sometimes whole paragraphs, from a source and pretend it's their own work. Sometimes, students try to get around plagiarism by changing a few words. Unfortunately, this is still plagiarism. The purpose of having you do assignments and write papers is for you to make connections and learn things. If teachers just wanted you to read about something, they would assign you to read something. Copying information from sources and other people defeats the purpose of doing assignments. Another thing to keep in mind is that your teacher knows your writing style from previous assignments. If there is a drastic difference in vocabulary, sentence structure, voice, or anything else, they're going to notice. So why does it matter? Plagiarism and cheating don't just affect you when you do it. They affect you when other people do it as well. If one student cheats receiving an artificially high score, it may impact the scores of other classmates. In the professional world, if somebody makes money off of something that isn't actually theirs, the original creator is out that money. So how can you avoid plagiarism? Do your own work. Always do your own homework and lab reports. Even if you do it wrong, you learn something in the process. Identify any information that's not considered common knowledge. Unless using direct quotes, you must paraphrase what the original author said and cite where it came from. Take notes from the sources you intend to use rather than copying them into your document. This way, you're taking an extra step to avoid plagiarism. 
Use a quote if you can't think of another way to paraphrase the information. And always, always, always cite the source of any information in any assignment that is not from your head. This includes written, spoken, or artistic expressions of any kind. So what is common knowledge? Things that are found in a number of places and are likely to be known by a large number of people. Things like the sky is blue, the grass is green, Times Square is in New York City, George Washington was the first president of the United States. What is considered common knowledge in one area may not be in another. To be safe, if you do not already know the information being presented, just cite it. At this point, you probably already know what a citation is. But to be brief, a citation is how you indicate where your information came from. There are two types of citation styles that are frequently used at the high school and college level. They are MLA and APA styles. Each style has a way to do in-text citations, a bibliography, and a way to do footnotes and endnotes. A paraphrase is a restatement of a text, passage, or work, giving the meaning in another form. As always, here's a work cited of the work that influenced my writing of this presentation. If you'd like more information on paraphrasing and creating citations, please stop by the library or speak to your teacher.